The gentleman from Tennessee, Mr. Duncan, is recognized. Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Chairman. It was primarily conservative groups that were targeted, but people on all of all pl political persuasions are very upset about this. President Obama said on May 15th, he said it's inexcusable, and Americans are right to be angry about it, and I am angry about it. I will not tolerate this kind of behavior in any agency, but especially in the IRS, given the power that it has and the reach that it has into all of our lives. And as I said earlier, it should not matter what political stripe you're from. The highest uh, official of the ACLU here in this city said that, that uh, even the apparent, quote, even the appearance of playing partisan politics with the tax code is about as constitutionally troubling as it gets. With the recent push to grant federal agencies broad powers to mandate donor disclosure for advocacy groups on both the left and right, there must be clear checks in place to prevent this from ever happening again. Mr. George, will you promise to us or commit to us this time that you will make it a high priority to make sure that something like this never happens again? Uh, sir, we will. I make a commitment to you to do our level best to work with the Internal Revenue Service and others involved to help establish procedures to help identify and avoid this from occurring. I, I cannot, obviously, sir, control what happens within the 100, approximately 100. All right, thank IRS. you. Mr. Schulman, on March 22nd, uh, 2012, you, you testified that there was absolutely no targeting. Uh, when asked this by Congressman Bustani at the Ways and Means uh, hearing, and that's uh, been covered several times already this morning. But there was an internal IRS review that was completed in early May, just a little over a month later. And you said that when you met with Mr. Miller, you were assured that uh, this activity had stopped. Was that, and, and so you took no further action. Did you ever? discuss this with anybody at the Department of Treasury, any Treasury official at all? Um, I had definitely had no substantive conversations uh, with anyone at Treasury and did not report that, um, that there was uh, a list and that kind of things. Mr. Rowland, when you learned that this had gone on, who did you discuss this with at the Department? Well, I learned the details, uh, Congressman, when the report was made public uh, a week or ten days ago, and obviously at the Department at that point we discussed it with the Secretary and General Counsel and others to make sure that we began to put in place both the accountability with respect to people who are responsible for this misconduct, but also to make sure that we put in policies and procedures that would make sure this wouldn't happen again, not just the, rec the implementation of the recommendations that the IG included within his audit report, but also to charge, as the Secretary of the Treasury has done, the new acting commissioner of IRS with a broader agenda to make sure that this was looked at carefully and to make sure he had a broader review to make sure that this didn't happen again. Let me ask you this. Uh, apparently one of this, these groups called the Coalition for Life was asked uh, in their uh, uh, – was asked by IRS officials about uh, – prayer meetings that they had held and how much of their time was spent on prayer meetings and what went on at those prayer meetings. Do you think that questioning like that is proper? No, Congressman. I think that the conduct that is outlined in the, uh, in the IG's report is obviously inexcusable, deplorable. Uh, I, don't, I can't be more clear than that. It's, it's absolutely outrageous. Mr. Shulman, did you, do you think that those types of questions should be asked in this situation? Certainly sounds about people, inappropriate to about, me. About religious beliefs. No, I don't. It sounds inappropriate to me. Now, a few minutes ago, you said that there was a uh, there was another method. There's the 501c3, and then there's the 501c4. And you said that uh, there are situations where people don't have to apply. What were you uh, talking about there? Um, my best understanding is that none of these groups uh, of the 300 that, that are talked about or the 298 in the report actually have to apply for 501c4 status. That a 501c4 um, can start operating, um, can hold itself out, can do all of its business, um, and then can file a, what's called a Form 990, which is the equivalent of a tax return for a, for a tax-exempt organization. Um, and uh, so I, I think that's an option that organizations have. That's, that's what I thought you meant, but I wanted to be clear on that. Thank you very much. I yield back. Thank you, gentlemen, for his question.